So we've been focused on, in terms of our decision statement, we've been focused on if, else, if, else statements. Um, in Java, there is another type of decision structure. Um, and as far as I can remember, there's no real Python equivalent to this. This is kind of a very unique structure um, that comes from the C programming language. So some aspects of the syntax will seem a little out of place compared to other things in Java, but that's a reflection of its C heritage. So we're going to create another static method um, as an example to illustrate this new um, decision statement. And so public static, it's going to return a string and we're going to call the method get student class and it will take one parameter of type in called grade number. So the intention of this method is that we call the get student class method and if we specify a value of 10 it would return the string sophomore. Or if we specify the value of 5 it would return the string junior high. Okay, So we're basically translating from a grade number to a string that describes that particular year in school. Um, which gives us an opportunity to learn about this, this new statement. All right, so this new statement, we'll first like describe it a little bit. It's called the switch statement. Um, and this is another conditional decision statement like an if statement. Okay. So a reasonable question is like, well, what's wrong with an if, else, if, else statement? Why do we need this? And we, we never need a switch statement. We could always use an if, else, if, else. Um, that said, personally, and not just personally, but I think you know, best practice says um, the switch statement is preferred when evaluating several discrete values. And discrete is key here. What I mean by discrete values is if we want to check very specific, let's say, numbers, like 10, 11, 12, 6, um, those are discrete values, and the switch statement lends itself to it. Um, if we just have to check a couple things, we just write an if-else statement. But if we have several discrete values we're checking, a switch statement tends to be a little bit more readable. Um, in a, but that said, it only works for checking those discrete values. If you want to check between the ranges of like 10 to 20, and then 21 to 30, and then 31 to 40, the switch statement doesn't do that. It only does specific values. We can't do less than greater than type, type stuff. It's just for equality. It's support, in terms of types, it only supports certain types. It supports byte, short, char, and int primitive types. It does not support floating point types. It doesn't support float or double because those don't lend themselves to discrete values as we saw earlier in the chapter. It also doesn't support a long. Okay. In addition to those primitive types, it also supports um, enumerations, which are beyond the scope of this course. If you're interested, I created a couple of slides in the chapter five class notes that you can check out. Um, and it supports, surprise, surprise, um, string objects. So once again, the string class it gets special treatment by the Java programming language. We can actually use the switch statement for different string values, which can be convenient as well. Here's how it works. The expression, which is part of the switch statement, is evaluated. And then the flow of execution jumps to the case that matches. Okay. And let's look at a specific example to make that a little bit more concrete. So we'll create a local variable of type string called student class. We'll initialize it to an empty string for now. And then we'll eventually, eventually we will return it. So I'll throw that at the end so I don't forget. But this is what the switch statement looks like. We use a new keyword switch, and then in parentheses is some expression. This can be any arbitrarily complicated expression as long as um, it evaluates to a byte, short, char, int, enumeration, or string. In our case, we'll just switch on the grade number, which is an int. 
And then we have curly brackets which define the block for the switch statement. So in parentheses, doesn't go an entire condition like with an if or an else if, but instead just an expression that evaluates to a specific value of one of those types. The condition is then implied by the use of different cases. So we're looking only for equality here. Again, we can't do greater than or less than. We're just checking for equality. So let's deal with freshman first. We would say case and then the value that we're looking to match. So in case the expression grade number evaluates to 9, the flow of execution, meaning the next line that is evaluated after this one, will be inside the curly brackets for case 9. And inside here, we can have as much code as we want. In this case, though, we'll simply set student class. Oops. Sorry. We'll set student class to freshman. So if the value of grade number equals 9, this code here is, is executed. Now due to the C heritage of the switch statement, there's some potentially unexpected and odd behavior here, which is when we finish with a given case block, code keeps running from that point. It would run right into the next case. So let's make a little note about that because this can certainly be unexpected. It's certainly very different than our if, else, if, else structure. Um, we need to explicitly make that not happen. And the way we do that is we use the break keyword. So break causes the flow of execution to leave the switch. To be clear, that's important because without a break, the flow of execution continues into the next case. So we need to put a break statement here. As we're running through this code, we look at grade number, let's say it's a nine, we match the case, we run this line of code. Once we get to the break, we then completely leave the switch. We'll jump all the way down to the end of the switch statement here and run from there, okay? So the break is needed. Yes, but like that, doesn't matter. So let's let's add in a case for sophomores, and then we'll kind of walk through it, and I think that might help. So let's add a case here for sophomores. Case 10, and we'll say student class equals sophomore, and we'll say break. If this was like an if, else, if, else, once we finish one given block, then it would go to the end of the statement. But let's say, let's temporarily, I'm going to get rid of the break. If the grade number is nine, yes, it matches this case, so it's going to run this block of code. So it's going to assign freshman to student class. But it continues to just run code from this point until something makes it stop. So the code keeps running and it runs right over the case 10 and it's going to set student class to sophomore and then it's going to get the break which jumps to the end of the switch statement. So it's very odd. It's not like any other structure we've seen in, in Java. We have to put these breaks in if we don't want it to continue into the next case. And honestly, usually we don't want it to continue to the next case. Um, if you're like, well, this seems silly and strange, you're absolutely correct and it's simply because of the way Historically, this was in C, and the way it was implemented in C, um, in terms of like the labels, that's why it behaves this way. So it is strange. So if you have a case 11 section of code there, yep. um, right underneath it, and then um, you put in 10, 
um, it would jump to 10, right? And if you didn't have a break, it would go right down to 11. Go right through 11 as well. It would skip 9. Yep, okay. exactly, exactly. Yeah, so let's actually add cases for juniors and seniors. So we'll have breaks for all of those to make sure it works the way we expect. Sometimes this behavior is actually desirable. So for example, when it comes to junior high students, we could have a case um, 6 and a case 7 and a case 8. And the block for each of those three cases could be exactly the same. That is setting student class to junior high. But we can actually take advantage of this behavior of the code continuing to run to have several cases um, use the same code. So sometimes this odd behavior is actually advantageous. So we can actually see that by leaving out the break, multiple cases can run the same code. And here's, what I, here's an example of that. So we could say case 6, case 7, case 8, and then have one block for all three cases that says student class equals junior high. So for example, if the value was 7, from a flow of execution perspective, it would jump to case 7. And the code would just run from here. It would run right through case 8. And then it would assign student class to junior high. And then it would break um, and leave the switch statement. So this odd behavior, we can use it to our advantage at times. And here's an example of it. Now, just to be clear, if we, wanted, if we wanted numbers between, let's say, 11 and 20, we would not do case 11, case 12, case 13, case 14, case 15. We would just write an if-else statement um, and use greater than and less than operators. Um, but in this case, it's just three. It's not too bad. This seems like an OK way to do it. So, All right, we still have to deal with elementary students. And we have another keyword we can use there. Default matches everything not matched by one of the cases. So we can just say, by default, if it hasn't matched any of the other cases, it will jump to the default block, student class equals elementary. I'll put a break there just for good practice, um, and it'll work out. Now just to be clear, we could totally write this with an if, else if, else statement. We do not need to use a switch. You never have to use a switch. I just want you to be familiar with it, because at times I think it leads to code that's a little bit more clear which I think is, is useful.